Here's some alpha on what I think is the next NFT blue chip. Stick around for the next few minutes and I'll tell you why. Do you ever feel like you, your childhood just wasn't long enough? Well, this project kind of helps bring back some of that creativity and joy that you once had and forgot about. We'll pop right into here. It's a collection of 8,888 unique NFTs. They had a white list at 0.2 ETH. There were 4,230 of those in that white list. They had a Dutch auction at 0.6 ETH. There was 4,488 of those. I believe the team is a group of five. There were 20 apiece to them, so 100 out of that total, and then the remaining amount is left over for raffles and uh, future collaborations and that sort of thing. Yeah. What is really nice about the team is they just keep outdoing themselves. They had come out with a 30 frame per second animation video clip. They just announced that they are bumping it up and they were putting out a 60 frame per second. It's going to be pretty amazing to view on a 4K or 8K HD TV. It's, it's going to be pretty epic, I'll tell you. Uh, also, in the future, they're going to be coming out with a PFP tool, and that is going to allow you to convert your animated imaginary one to a high-resolution PFP. You can download your I.O. In a, in a PFP format or in a static high-resolution format. It's going to be pretty great, and I think this is coming out uh, post-reveal, and they're going to have uh, basically a double pixel resolution here, so I, I really look forward to that. They have a careers page. You can come in. They have, this is part of the roadmap here. So yeah, if you feel like you meet any of these kinds of qualifications, go ahead and feel free to apply. So the first phase of their roadmap is obviously a community building and engagement activity. They've done pretty well, I feel. They have a pretty good following on Twitter. They've got about 509,000 people that follow them there. There are 78,000 people or more in Discord, and I think there's roughly 20,000 of them active each day That every time that I've went in and, and visited. So they've done a pretty good job, I believe, at pulling in the crowd and actually keeping them and, and keeping them engaged. Moving on, they've got the metaverse part of their roadmap. They're going to have an art gallery type of thing. There's going to be some sort of plot of land, some sort of gaming in the works. We've got real life situations. I believe there was actually some kind of a, an apparel drop that's going to be coming up here. There are a few people that might have won that somehow, or maybe they purchased. And the store is closed at the moment. I think it'll be opening up after they get done with the reveal and hire some more of the team and that, that sort of thing. And toys coming along. There are events coming up here. I believe in, in June there's, in Singapore there is some sort of community gathering. There is going to be in, let's see, I think it's the end of June as well. There is an event, an NFT event that the team is going to be coming to in New York City. So that'll be a great opportunity for the community to go in and meet the team and, and the founders and that sort of thing. And then it's just more building here. There is, like I said, the uh, PFP tool that's up there. I think they're kind of going to be developing a few other things to bring value to the holders. There's a tokenomics thing. There's, a, there's an ecosystem that they're developing here. And then moving into the partner section, it's just more collabs, building out the team, that kind of thing. They're pretty much trying to bridge the gap between Web 2 and Web 3 developments. And I feel like they've positioned themselves in a, in a great spot to, to capture that liquidity and bring value from Web 2 into Web 3. It's too much. But you can see there is some pretty great quality of uh, pieces that were designed here. These these do actually move. They are animated. My computer is a little bit slow here. And here is some future value creation that's going to be coming up and that is also detailed in this little bit of a roadmap. And here is the team that we will get back to shortly. Here we have the very short 
version of the roadmap and split into a few different phases here. The first one, which we talked about, was the community building, which we've pretty much gone over and done that. We have the foundation building, which we are pretty much sliding into phase two right now. The team has delegated enough of the funds towards each department for hiring in I believe they are working on four different pillars for hiring. They've got um, art department, technology, branding, and community. So that's going to help launch this project forward a lot faster when they get that whole team established. And moving into the phase three, which I know the whole community will be excited for, and that is going to be the airdropping of the vehicles. And I do not know if this is going to be like a whitelist situation for holders that that basically get the whitelist for these drops here or, or how it works. All of the details still need to be ironed out with everything, but that's another thing to look forward to coming up here. And then uh, moving into the utility part of things where they're going to be building out the tokenomic system, the just everything coming up here. As far as utility, there's going to be more utility announcements. Actually, today we just received another one, which I will jump into right after this here. And then phase five is just uh, obviously just expanding and creating new partnerships and collaborations and, and just trying to bring more value back into the into the project. So getting over into the announcement that was released today uh, which was very nice to see that they've done a very great job with their campaigning and keeping the engagement with the community they're they're making sure that it's not too much but it's not too little of information so it's it's really re refreshing to see that coming from the team and like we had talked about before they're basically just trying to be the bridge over that gap of web 2 and web 3 and bring value in uh to to our direction so moving into the short-term goals here, which everybody was really looking forward to, was the staking, and it looks like it's really not that far out, about a, about a quarter out. It's nice to see that they already have some, play, some pages designed for it, and it, it looks like it's going to be pretty smooth, uh, very, very easy user interface here. Uh, another thing everybody's excited for, the vehicle drop. So this is going to be every holder that uh, has an imaginary one is going to receive one of these. And like I said, I don't know if this is going to be like a whitelist situation or if these are just going to be something that is just to show appreciation for the long-term holders and, and maybe it's just going to be airdropped like that. So that'll be really neat to see. And the reveal and we can expect a, a lot of the things that we've already talked about really high high quality artworks we've got 60 frames per second it looks like they've done a few hundred different uh, unique traits so that'll be something that's going to be pretty cool they've got 25 one of one legendary pieces there's going to be a bunch of rares and and uh, the normals and that sort of thing so the yeah the PFP tool that we had talked about it's going to be really nice to see uh, how all of this stuff plays out. The hires, like I said, we've went through, they've got the career page, they're looking to hire over 30 people here, and once that happens, we'll be able to launch this thing full steam ahead. More public relations and social medias, which is always great. We've got the live meetups that we talked about, and that's pretty much it for this, uh, for this utility announcement, but that was a pretty nice one. I think everybody was very, very stoked to hear that and just knowing that the team is really just pushing it and trying to bring value as fast as they can to the community because they know that it's basically a hot potato with the NFT community. People's attention spans are so short. You've got to basically meet the needs of a bunch of kids. So, <laughs> you know, there's there's that. So it's really refreshing to see that the team is is delivering on their short-term time frames and they've got long-term goals and they're, and they're being very transparent at every single step of the way. Yeah, so you can check that the whole team is doxxed. You, you can find them on Twitter. You can find them on LinkedIn. Uh, I'll just go through a quick quick rundown of each one. Here's Clement Shia. Here's just some of his details. I'm not going to read everything off if you want. I'll just post a link to all these things. Um, he's got quite a history here. 
he's started two different things. He's got the Ophiel as well that he had started with David Lee, which is another partner that is also in uh, the Imaginary Ones. He is the co-founder as well of that. Here's his credentials. And here we have David Poon. He's the head of partnerships and artist of uh, Imaginary Ones. And you can see some of his credentials here as well. We'll get into Kay Lapoon. Everybody knows him as KBBY. Looks like he was uh, actually in the in the military. So it looks like he's he's got some sort of uh, work ethic and regimen. So that's always good to see in a team member. And last but not least, we have Jerome Quack, and he is the chief techie at uh, the Imaginary Ones. And you can also find his credentials here. So that's it for the team. You can dig into them a little further if you'd like, and you can actually speak with them in Discord. Uh, quite a few of them come in, they pop in every day, and, and uh, at least say hi and see how the community is doing. So here's a little bit more information about Clement Chia. Um, He's been pretty well known in the Singapore region for his motion graphic agency and, and designs. Some of his partnerships are, are Facebook, Formula One, Singapore Airlines, Jaguar, McDonald's, to name a few. He's worked with Maybelline and L'Oreal. Um, so here we are at Offset. This is the splash board. You can see they've got some pretty cool graphic and design. We'll come down here. You can see that they have some pretty pretty large reputable names that they've worked for. They've done some sort of design or motion picture animation for, for these kinds of companies. Very reputable names. So that's always a plus to see the team has some kind of background like that. And here are just a few more. Uh, my computer is a little bit slow to load some of these things up. You can see Maybelline, L'Oreal is in here somewhere. Yeah, right here. Uh, Samsung. They've got a, a lot of a lot of names that uh, garner some weight. Article from Tatler. Clement Chia's Imaginary One's NFT collection sells out in four minutes. This was a highly anticipated NFT drop, just knowing the background of the entire team, uh, knowing the quality of artwork and design that they bring. The here, Well, actually, here's a clip that you can see of just one of the NFTs that is going to be released here, and I think the quality actually might be slightly enhanced from this one here. It, so yeah, a nice small little article just detailing uh, the collection and uh, just a small bit of his history. So every project faces FUD. Uh, this is no different than any other one. There were a few coordinated FUD attacks against against the project, uh, one of them being some kind of connection with the Squiggles project about how the art is similar, how there is some kind of scam wallet or something like that. But these guys have no connection with it. They squashed the FUD pretty quick in the Twitter spaces. Uh, I'm not even going to mention the two people's names that were were presenting this information they have their own projects i believe that they were scared of having liquidity sucked out of their own project and and put into this one and unfortunately the nft space is getting kind of corrupt like that um, there was also some recent one about a uh, metadata leak there was a pre-reveal purchase for six eth and people were speculating that there was a metadata leak but that was another one that was squashed just yesterday. The metadata hasn't even been revealed yet. The, it hasn't even been produced. Um, so there's a lot of coordinated attacks to, to tear this down. But honestly, with the bear market that we've had, uh, Ethereum hit 2500 bucks roughly. Bitcoin's at 34000 bucks right now around this recording time. And the project has held up quite well at a floor price of about $1 a little over one ETH, about 1.1 ETH hanging around there. So I feel like it's uh, pretty solid with all of the stuff that's coming around. And I think that after this reveal, people are going to be very surprised with the quality and...
and the value that the team is creating and building and you see it they are very transparent the you can find their wallet that has all of the funds from mint they tell the community every time that they're about to move funds when they move funds and and what they're allocating them for as a matter of fact uh 90 percent of the mint funds go back into the project so like a treasury fund essentially which is very great that's very reassuring for the community knowing that there is always going to be funds to build out the next step the next utility also Every holder that has an Imaginary Ones NFT is going to be able to own the entire IP rights. So you're going to be able to use your image in a commercial or personal use case anywhere. So something similar to the Board, Board Apes, a restaurant that had opened up, Board Apes themed restaurant. So you could open up your own Imaginary Ones themed restaurant based off of your character. Uh, or whatever, you know, the, the ideas are, are endless. So uh, that was another great feature. The amount of detail that goes in just to make these simple items that are just background is quite amazing.